What's going on everybody? This is Nick from House of Paints. We are going to be working on a new project. Just finished the stone golem. Now going to work on the clay golem, which is the second of the four that I have. I mentioned in the last video that I was able to grab three of the four golems or golems from the monster's manual. Um, the other one that I have is the iron golem that I'll be working on after the clay golem. Really excited about these guys, uh, just you know, to be able to have the whole uh, set of a certain type of monster is pretty cool. Recently I just finished the entire line of the young chromatic dragons. I have the remaining two young metallic dragons that I want to be uh, finishing up soon here. I have the brass, bronze, and silver already completed. I'm going to be working on the gold and copper here in the coming weeks. But for now, we're going to be working on the clay golem right here. I'm going to be going with kind of a red clay type feel with this, kind of like a desert clay almost, uh, if you get a look at him here. Now, he is a WizKids miniature, and like all of these WizKids miniatures that are affiliated with D&D, &D, they come primed and ready to go right out of the pack. So no priming is needed for this miniature. I have done a once over to make sure there aren't any glaring mold lines that I have to remove. If there were, I would just take a small X-Acto knife and kind of just like chip away at them. But this guy is pretty smooth and he's ready to rock and roll. Um, for the base coat, I'm going to be doing a once over on him with one color, just like I did with the stone golem. I'm going to be base coating him with ruddy skin, which is kind of like a tan, almost rosy shadow type color. Um, and then I'm going to be giving him a wash with a brown wash. And I haven't decided on what I'm going to dry brush him with. I'm leaning towards a rosy skin type of like a light, light flesh color for a highlight on a dry brush. So we'll see what goes on there. I did learn from my mistake last time. I am going to be using a larger brush to base coat him because even though my stone golem was a relatively small miniature, using a number two brush to base coat actually did take a while. So I'm using uh, just a larger brush because with this guy, he's going to be entirely one color, so I don't really have to, you know, worry too much about detail. I do have my water dropper here, so I'm going to be diluting my paint just a little bit because um, if you use the paint right out of the bottle, chances are it's going to be too thick. And when it's too thick, it can certainly distort details on your figure. So here we go. We're just going to get right into it here and you'll see how quickly this guy becomes base coated. Um, again, one drop of water I have used in the palette on the paint. Just one drop and I think that is actually fairly diluted. I'm going to kind of dab it on a paper towel here off to the side because you can see it kind of starting to bubble up a little bit there. I'm just going to use that to kind of spread it around. Um, I'm not concerned if it's too wet. The only thing with the with your paint being too wet as I veer off camera is you may have to go back and do a second coat. And that's, you know, that's okay. Especially on a figure of this size and a figure that's not as involved as far as uh, variation in colors, that's not a big deal. The acrylic paints, they dry pretty quickly, even when you, you know, dilute them a hair, they do dry relatively quickly, so it's not like you're sitting here wasting a whole lot of time. Really just going in and making sure you hit all the all the little nooks and crannies. Now 
this brown um, or this ruddy skin is, like I said, more of a flesh tone, but you know, I do want to go with them. Um, every time I think of a clay golem, I just think of a like a red kind of desert clay. So that is what I wanted to do with this gentleman. Golems are pretty interesting. Um, recently, having read up on them as gonna let this dry. I do think I'm gonna have to give him kind of a once over as far as um, I completely miss this part of his arm here. And that'll, that'll happen. That happens to me on almost every project. Like, you know, you think you're done base coating and then like, you know, the, the other day I like completely missed the underside of a dragon's membrane, so. All right, we'll let him dry. When the All right, so I did notice that after um, it dried a little bit, I had some areas that were like super thin. Let's see if that'll focus. Uh, like you see back here on the shoulder blades specifically, super thin, so I'm just gonna go back in with a little bit. I am switching to a number two brush here because I'm just picking out little areas where I need more coverage. filling in those bases. Still having the paint diluted. Again, very important not to distort any detail that are on these miniatures. Because these miniatures come very detailed. I mean, these guys do a fantastic job putting these miniatures together. Um, So certainly be careful not to make it so that all that awesome detail goes by the wayside. Get his little pinky down here. Sorry, I just put my daughter to bed, so I'm in like baby talk mode right now. I'm gonna get up on here. Let's quad. Here, a lot of the higher ridges on this guy were kind of left there. So I was gonna do this off camera, but I wanted to show those of you out there in case you know if you are beginners as I'm off camera, so nobody's seeing anything anyway. So there we go. on his keister and now we'll cover up these shoulder blades here golems are bosses man or golems I really I should probably learn like what the accepted way to say that is in the community but they're beasts dude I mean like this guy's got immunity to acid, poison, psychic, bludgeoning, piercing, slashing from non-magic. Can't be charmed, can't be exhausted, uh, can't be frightened, can't be paralyzed, can't be, I mean, these guys pack a punch and I believe this one, the clay golem has upwards of around 140 hit points. Natural armor, so, but still he's got an armor class of 14. I want to say he's a challenge rating of close to 10, so he's a formidable adversary. I say he's like 9 or 10. I think I like that for a base coat. Again, you in the base stage, you want to get coverage and you just want everything to be hit with the color that you desire 
and I do like this a lot. So we are gonna actually let him dry, and then we're gonna go in there with the old brown wash, darken the base coat up a little bit, and then show off some of this awesome detail and depth that Clay Gollum has.